Welcome back to Wigs with Scarlet. Today I am going over all of the necessities that you need when you have a human hair wig to take care of it, to uh, wash it, to style it. All those must-haves are coming right up. As always, if you like what I do here, please, please, please subscribe to my channel and we're getting started. All right, all those things that you need to take care of our little investments uh, are what I'm going to talk about today. So human hair is, is not cheap, as we know. The nice thing about it, though, is that it has a much longer lifespan than synthetics. And if you're going for anything that goes past your nape, it doesn't tangle the way a synthetic does. So it definitely has benefits. Uh, the feel of human hair, the, um, the longevity, the lack of tangling is what makes human hair very, very appealing to a lot of us. Now, human hair, if you're buying good human hair, is not cheap. So how do we take care of our wigs and what are the tools and the supplies that we're going to need? Well, there's quite a few supplies that you're going to need when you get your human hair wig or wigs. So first one is what is this little beauty is standing on right now. It's one of my favorites right here. This is a wig stand and canvas block head. So let me just go down and show you. Go back up. These are very, very important to have. And you wanna make sure, mine is, says 21 here. You wanna make sure that your canvas block head is smaller than your cap size. Because if you get a canvas block head that's too big, it's gonna stretch out your cap. So I'm a 21.5 circumference, my canvas head is 21. If you're a 22 circumference, you should get a 21 or a 21.5. If you are a um, 23 circumference, you want to get a 22 block head. So make sure your canvas block head is smaller in circumference than your cap size. Very important. I love this stand. And just so you know, all of the products I'm going to go over today with you are on my website. I will link my website below and you can go to my website and see all of my tools and my products and this little stand and all that great stuff. All right. So... First off, we're gonna start with the products you need. You are going to need a color safe shampoo and conditioner, and I would go with something that is sulfate free. Make sure it's sulfate free. Now, I love the Redken products, and because of the way my camera is, they're probably looking backwards, but this is Redken Chromatics, and this is Redken All Soft Conditioner. So make sure your uh, shampoo is sulfate free. Very important for not um, stripping your color, at least stripping it slower. It's still going to strip, but but keep longevity in the color. And you don't have to get a super expensive one. Um, I do get more expensive shampoos, but if you're on a budget, just make sure it's sulfate free. All right. Uh, another super important uh, thing for styling your wig is heat protectant spray. This is Sebastian Trilliant but there are many heat protectant sprays as long as you have some kind of heat protectant before you're styling your wig. Uh, I swear by this stuff, this is the Kenra Dry Oil Conditioning Mist. And what this does is it gives your hair a little bit of oil that's dry so it's not having a product buildup. And it also helps when I take my wig off and it has a lot of staticky pieces, it kind of takes that static out. So I pretty much use this daily. When I take off my wig, I mist it and um, comb through it, very important. For all those return hairs, you definitely want your wax stick. This is a bedhead version wax stick for hair, and that goes on there to um, sit down all those little return hairs. Now oil, and I'm talking straight oil, is very important for your wigs as well, and you wanna use some oil after every washing. Now I swear by the Nectar J, which is the genius um, Jason Archer's version of oil. I think he is a genius, and I think that anything that he has is going to be the best. So this is called Nectar J. It is the Magnolia J Wigs oil made by Jason Archer, and that is not on Amazon. You would have to buy that directly from him, and I will put that in the links as well. Now, the other thing I like is a daily, uh, a leave-in daily conditioner spray. This is a leave-in spray. So I don't use it every day, but I will spray with a daily leave-in conditioner. I would say when I feel like my wigs are getting a little more tangly or um, having a little more of that staticky hair, I will add some daily provisional. It's Kenra Daily Provision Leave-In Conditioner. 
And very important, it doesn't really matter what brand you get, but knot sealer is a must for after you wash your wigs, you wanna seal your knots. I have tutorials on all these different things and how to do them. Today, I'm just going over the products, the must-haves you need to have for your human hair wigs. Knot sealer. This one is top lock, but there are others as long as it's a knot sealer. Now, once in a while, after I shampoo and condition, I wanna leave in a, a really good leave-in conditioner. And I do that maybe every third wash or so. And the leave-in conditioner that I uh, go by and swear by is K18. Now K18 is very expensive. It is a um, leave-in molecular repair hair mask, but it really, it, it, it really gets the hair looking just at feeling and looking amazing. So I use that maybe every third wash or so. Spray bottle with water. Always something important to have, a spray bottle with water. All right, so those are the, and I have many more products than this, but these are my kind of must-have go-to products that I would say are really important. Heat tools, now it depends on how you like to style, but whether you like to style straight or curly, I think this is a must-have. This is a hot comb. The hot comb, and I did a tutorial on this, is very important for those return hairs. You wanna go down with your hot comb over the return hairs, and then add some wax. Hot comb is a must, and that's whether you like curly or straight hair. I also think that you should have a really good hair dryer that you can use on low heat. This is the Chi Rocket, and I really love the Chi Rocket. It dries hair faster with less heat, so it's a really good one. If you are going to use, um, uh, if you want straight hair, if you like the straight look, you wanna get a good, um, Flat iron, I like the Chi, this is old. I mean, it's really old, you can tell it looks raggedy, but this is the Chi flat iron. Now, for my um, curls to make waves, I'm gonna tell you what I use here. I use the Chi spinning curl because I am not good at using a regular curling iron. The thing with the curling iron regular is that clamp always makes a dent for me. I'm just not good at it. So this curls the hair automatically it even has a um a catch that if it tangles it'll beep and make you release the hair so it's pretty amazing um and this is how i put in my waves i use my chi spinning curl there are others that that curl the hair for you i think another one is beach waver which is very popular um if you want something that's going to make the curl for you without dealing with that clamp there's lots of options out there or you could just use a traditional curling iron if you're good with the clamp and aren't making all kinds of dents like i do all right, moving on, um, a couple things uh, when it comes to making those wigs look gorgeous and also wearing them. I need a wig grip. Um, I feel like it's more secure and I really like the wig grips. This is just me personally. I like the wig grips that have the lace here and the lace here and I like this one because it's very thin. Some of the wig grips that I've seen are kind of thick and bulky and I like a thin one. There are also silicone wig grips. It just depends on what you like. Um, the other thing is you want to have a wide tooth comb that you go through the ends. You really don't want to use um, a finer comb than a wide tooth. Okay, now you can use a brush, but you want to make sure it's either a bristle, bristle brush um, or this is one I got from um, En Vogue uh, Medical Wigs. It's, it's, I don't know where to buy it, but it's, uh, it like separates as you brush which is nice. You just want, don't want anything that's gonna pull the hair too much, okay? Now, let's talk about some things for maintaining our wigs. And I've done videos and tutorials on all these. Blocking your lace front, you need light colored twill tape and you need ball headed pins. We do not wanna use the uh, T pins, they're too thick, we're using ball headed pins. And if you wanna know what blocking your lace front is, there are tutorials on that on my Instagram. Um, so check out my Instagram, scarlet underscore, uh, well, I'll, I'll put in the details instead of going over all that. Okay. The other thing you want to get is, um, lace fray protector, but you don't want to use lace fray until you've cut your lace as high as it can go. And this is the one recommended most by wig artist. It is called fray check. Again, it's going to be backwards with my camera. Fray check, lace fraying, uh, stops fraying on lace. Uh, the other things that I swear by for making my part lines look natural is scar tape and a powder that is about one tone lighter than your skin tone. And this is True Match, L'Oreal True Match powder. It's not expensive and it works great. 
when you do your powder, you want a very thin, fine, uh, fine brush for putting it on top. If you're going to put it on top, when you're putting it on the scar tape, a, a, a big, a small fluffy brush, not the big one, the small side fluffy brush. And again, I have tutorials on how I do that. A lot of times our caps are not going to fit great. And so I also feel like it's important to have your needles, your round needles and your, and you want to look up something like wig sewing because you need a thicker, a thicker thread to make it stay into the cap. And I do tutorials on how to adjust your wig caps. And these are what I use because, you know, these are standard caps that don't always fit us right. The other thing I have is a rip stitch. And the rip stitch is if, for instance, a silk liner comes in, I don't really like those and I can take it out with a rip stitch. But some people might like silk liners or they may get wigs that don't have silk liners, but I'm just including it in there just because. Um, so these are, in my opinion, the basic must-haves for human hair wigs, just the basic must-haves, okay? There are more things, there are more products, there are so many. But when you have human hair, you've got to take care of them and they need certain things. Oh, I forgot one more thing. You need styling clips. So when you're styling, you're going to have to pin some of the hair up. Like so. So those are important to have as well. All right. I hope all this was helpful. Again, please, please, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.